when I saw the job posting for Colleen, it looked like it was written for me almost. Because you, the, they were looking for someone that could help integrate uh, with the military, use the military as a partner. Uh, uh, there were issues as far as economic development and things like that, the same things that we had went through in Fayetteville. And I was part of those discussions in Fayetteville as, uh, over the last, I don't know, eight years maybe. Uh, Fable has grown. We've done it right. There's been some good times and bad times, some up and downs, but you know we got through it. And I think I'm going to take that skill set, bring it here to Colleen, and, and we can and we can move to the next chapter of uh, policing. Well, you know, I I think the the biggest thing about the the issues here is that you really got to you got to drill down on the data and what's actually causing it. You know, you there I know that their their software and their, and their computer system. You need to be able to pull up all the data for every neighborhood. And you need to identify, number one, where are the crimes occurring? And is it day, night, evening? But then also, who's, a, who's committing? Because I guarantee you, their system like mine, it can identify probably the top 100 criminals. And you got to figure out where they sit in the system. Do they have cases pending against them and the DA hasn't arrested them? Are they out on bond? Are they on probation parole where we could use those resources to get them arrested? And you have to kind of laser focus on those individuals creating the most crime, really. And you have to put some resources into the neighborhood. As I was explaining to one of the other ladies here, she's the only person on her whole block that calls the police. I said, well, it's great that she calls the police, but there has to be some interaction with the police outside of that call afterwards to get the rest of the neighborhood to come out. Because you, have, you can take that street back. The neighborhood can take that street back, but it takes the police to keep the criminal at bay, but then it takes the neighborhood to step in and kind of fill that void when we're not there, to call 911 or to call the police when they see suspicious activity, to put cameras up and give us access to their footage when it catches something. Me being African American does give me more diverse views of things, and it does give me um, a more broader view of subjects. Um, so I get what you're saying. And um, so I, I just think that it helps me look at things a different way because I've had different life experiences and um, it may be some of the same experiences that some of these folks uh, that may have may be doing and causing some of the problems may be experiences, be experiencing. So um, I would say that I could bring some, um, some definitely insight um, to someone who was born and raised in a low-income urban community. Not every method works on every type of crime. You can't handle domestic violence homicide the same way that you handle a, uh, a street drug crime. You know, you can't try and prevent them in the same manner. The police can't go in the houses, right? And, and so you have to attack that with this method. And then in the, in the street crime area, you have to develop responses to that. The best response out there right now is, is what they call hotspot policing. A hotspot? Hotspot policing. But not just identifying where the hotspot is, but because you, you can do that and then just send officers in to saturate the area. Well, that'll drop crime this much. They know that. A bunch of places all over the country have done that and it, it does reduce crime in that hot spot area. But if you send officers in with a list of things that are causing the crimes to occur and ask them to deal with these issues, then crime drops even more. And if you go in with problem-oriented policing, where the officers go in, after being trained, they go in and they identify the particular things in that geographic spot that are allowing crime to happen. In other words, someplace like a maybe a convenience store that allows the kids to hang out front and drink beer or, or whatever. Maybe it's a, maybe it's an open air drug market that's at this vacant house. Whatever you do, if you don't fix that, you're going to have the same hot spot next year. You're going to have the same crimes there next year, and your hot spot is never going to move, and you're never going to actually impact the, the problem. So building a building a system where you can put together. Uh, specific solutions to specific areas uh, is, is the best method that, that's out there right now. 
You want uh, measurable data of where crimes are occurring and how they're occurring when and all the, all the form, formats there. It needs to be uh, an intelligence-led model, so it needs to be something that's got backbone behind it on where and how you're going to utilize those resources. And it has to be an accountability factor. Are those resources being utilized the best uh, possible way? And, and is it making a difference? And if it's not, it needs to be adjusted accordingly. And these are not something that's, that's over... Uh, I'm going to wait two months and then after I have this plan to go do it. It needs to be something that's an immediate response to those types of crimes. And when you have those immediate responses, you'll start seeing some of the reductions. Community policing is simple. It's, it's as simple as getting out of your car for 15 seconds, engaging someone in a small conversation, maybe introducing yourself, maybe yucking it up for a minute because you start yourself, hi, have we ever met? And usually the response is, oh God, I hope not. Or, uh, did I do something wrong? You know, that's the normal response. You say, no, you don't have to be in trouble with me, the policeman. I was driving down the street, this is where I work. I personally take ownership in all this, and I care about you as a citizen. No different than I care about my own family. I'm engaged in this, so much so that I, I'm willing to risk my life for you. So I wanted you to know who I am. I'm Steve. Here's my phone number. Call me if I can ever help you or if you have a question. And you get in your car and you drive away. That leaves a lasting impression with that citizen. So the next time, maybe next week, you're driving down the same street and you see the same person getting their mail or washing their car, just stop your car. And hopefully you remember their name, but maybe you don't. And you go, hi, remember me? Yeah. Do you have a minute to talk? No, I'm sorry, I don't. Okay, well it's good seeing you. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's great. Did you leave another lasting impression with that person? You did. 